Hi, this is Gregory Possman with the monthly message for December of 2015. Before I begin, I'd like to remind you that I am available now on certain Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays for private sessions. I would also like to remind you that on December 18th, we will have Shadra, the seat from the Council of Shambhala, who will be doing the webinar, and that will be a webinar on peace, introducing more peace into ourselves, into our planet, and into the cosmos. I have no idea who's going to do the message this month, so I will check out, and we will let whoever wishes to come through do so, and I hope that you benefit from this message. Greetings, we are the one who is called the Archangel Michael, some call us Mikael, you may call us whatever you like. And it is to understand that your planet is under a considerable amount of strain, for there is a certain amount of what you might call evil, as some have described it, and destruction and various other aspects going on. And we do not mean to be the one who foresees doom, but to understand these particular incidents are not over. It is to understand that there is an underlying current of what you would call, oh, what would you call it? Perhaps you would say it is evil, perhaps you would say it is destruction, Some would call it murder. Some would call it a form of insanity. But the truth of the matter is, these are aspects of what some might call karmic responsibility. And although they look as if they are random, in truth, they are not. In other words, those who are suffering from them, those who have seemingly been the victims of the perpetrators, so to speak. They all have contracts and agreements. They are all bringing things back into balance. That, of course, is impossible to explain to their families and loved ones, those to whom they have close emotional ties. A description such as that has little meaning, and no one understands more than we the pain that can be felt at losing a loved one. But it is to understand also that it must remind all of us that indeed in coming into this life, we have made agreements. We have made what one might call contracts. These contracts, these agreements, they are all designed to teach and to remind all of the others that although death seems like a finality, in truth, it is the beginning of a new situation. It is the beginning of something that is going to lead into greater awareness. It is the beginning or the birth, so to speak, of a new experience. And if one can focus upon that, Rather than the emotional sadness, the feelings of loss and abandonment, and even the anger, for oftentimes the loss of a loved one means that one must step up to the plate, so to speak, take responsibility for something the other was taking responsibility for. And it opens the door to a new kind of teaching a new kind of learning, in the absence of the loved one, so to speak. It does indeed place a firm responsibility on us. So it is to understand that our topic for this message is just that. It is responsibility. 
It is about taking responsibility for ourselves, taking responsibility for others, taking responsibility for the planet, so to speak. Earlier this evening, the man Ashid had dinner in a small restaurant, and he watched as one of the waitresses took food and drink out to a homeless man, and the man almost ran away. Perhaps he was embarrassed, perhaps he was ashamed. But the waitress made every effort to bring this package of food to this man. And she was able to make the exchange. And the man Ashid watched in wonder. And he felt a kind of opening in his heart as this woman went and took care of someone she barely even knew. Apparently it is this man's pattern to walk through the parking lot every evening at about the same time. And so the woman put the food away, so to speak, ready for when she saw him. And the moment she saw his blue jacket, she went outside and gave the food to the man. Now some of you may think that this is an isolated incident, and in truth it goes on billions of times a day in billions of different places on your planet. For there are a great many who allow their compassion to guide them, who allow their own feeling of giving, so to speak. And what does that have to do with responsibility? Well, that woman took responsibility for that man having some warm food to eat. That woman took responsibility for her brother, so to speak, as millions on your planet take responsibility for their brothers and sisters whom they have seemingly no connection to. Although if you were to look deeper into the Akashic Record, you would see that though these seem like random acts of kindness, they are actually not random at all. They are much more than that. They are the repayment of a kind of debt, repayment of a kindness, if you will. They are the repayment of something that occurred before. So, if you find yourself feeling a similar kind of compassion for another, then you cannot explain it in your brain, your mind, your heart, or any other part of your being. Allow yourself to imagine for just a moment that there may be some deeper connection between you and this being than you are aware of. And allow us to take a moment and digress. Have you noticed that there seems to be two meanings for everything, sometimes more than two? There seems to be what you see on the surface. And then there seems to be something else. There seems to be a deeper meaning, sometimes a hidden meaning, if you will. And it is to understand that you are absolutely correct. In truth, not only may there be two meanings, there may be four or six or eight or ten. As we have stated to you before, the universe is indeed a very efficient place. And to understand that efficiency takes place constantly each and every day. So again, returning to these random acts of evil, where those who seem to be innocent victims are taken, murdered, losing their lives, it is important to understand that again, these are not random acts either. These are efficient completions. They are efficient balancing of what some might call a karmic incident. And to understand for one to lose their life, that is a rather severe, or we might say dramatic, payment to make. But again to understand, when one reaches the other side, looks back upon the incident, there is complete understanding of why it took place. 
though that particular courtesy is not offered on the planet. For those of you who remain, you do not understand what has happened. You do not understand why it has happened. But in truth, it has happened for a very powerful reason. It has happened because it must happen. And no matter what you do to try to avoid it, no matter what you do to prevent it, ultimately, it will take place. Ultimately, the balance will be drawn, so to speak, in the situation. But what of the positive side? What of the billions of random acts of kindness that are taking place everywhere? In this part of the season, in many parts of the planet, people's hearts seem to be opening, and there is a desire to do good for others. It is a desire that is felt from deep within the being. And, oh, that it could not be felt every day of the year, of every month of the year, so to speak. But in truth, it is being felt now. Here is an interesting concept that many of you do not think about. What if you were to do a random act of kindness for yourself? What would that mean? The man was growing very tired earlier on this day, and he realized that it would be wise for him to end his activities, allow himself an opportunity to get some rest, some quiet and some peace. And he began to guilt himself out of it. He began to say to himself, Is it appropriate that I take this time for myself? That I allow myself to have an early day, so to speak? Even though he had been going all day, that he had never allowed himself an opportunity to rest. So our question remains, what would a random act of kindness for yourself look like? Would it look like purchasing something that you continue to rationalize against? In other words, not purchasing for yourself. A small gift, a small token of your self-appreciation. Is it possible that perhaps you could go and get that exercise, that walk, or that swim, or that run, or whatever it might be, that time at the gym, that you know would help to ease your mind by allowing you to reduce or release some of your stress? Is it a matter of taking a hot bath, a soak in hot water? to create what might be the reduction of stress in your life. Some wonderful candles, some nice music, perhaps a scent or two in the water that might waft up to your nostrils and allow you to feel as though you are truly pampering yourself. We began with the word responsibility. And you are responsible for yourself. And perhaps you are responsible for those others that you have come into this life to bring that karmic debt or whatever you want to call it into balance. Perhaps it is an opportunity. And when someone comes to mind, the least you can do is send them a positive, loving, compassionate blessing. It could be as simple as this. I bless so-and-so in all of his or her activities. I bless so-and-so in all of her or his activities. I bless his life. I bless all of his relations. I bless all of his family at the same time. So be it. It is a simple blessing. But it is to understand, and many of you forget, the thoughts and the feelings that go out from your minds and your hearts, they are tangible, palatable energy. And though you may think yourself meager, 
You may think yourself a humble being, of little strength or little power. Think again. For that wish, that desire, and that prayer for that person that you are thinking about goes far. And when others make that prayer for them, believe us, on our side it is heard. The bells and whistles go off, so to speak, and we hear those requests. We hear those prayers. We hear those blessings. And we do not fail to take notice. No. We go to the aid of that being if we can, if we are allowed. And we do whatever we can to ensure their safety. So, we do whatever we can to reverse the illness they have chosen, if that be the case. We try to assist them in their addiction, if that is the case. Whatever it might be, we do our best to assist them in assuaging their fears and their challenges. So we encourage you to take responsibility for those whom you know, those who come to mind, regardless of the level of familiarity you may or may not have with them. You may not know them well, but you can still send them love and light and charitable compassion. It is the time of year for many of you when these thoughts and these ideas come into your mind more powerfully. And that is important. It is important to remember. No matter where you journey, no matter where you are, no matter what you are doing, there is nothing wrong with taking a few moments, quiet moments, out, sitting down quietly and taking a deep breath, invoking peace into your being and allowing your mind to go blank for a few moments and let whomever's picture whomever's image come into your mind and take a few more seconds and send them that blessing that we have spoken of and give them an opportunity to feel that warmth and that kindness even if it is only for a few fleeting seconds. Because again, these aspects, these thoughts, these messages of compassion that you send to another, with or without their knowledge, and most of the time it is without, it will assist them greatly in their evolutionary path, in their spirituality, in their lessons. It is important. So allow yourself to take it again, a deep breath. And see the picture of your own being right there in your mind. And allow those thoughts of compassion and love and caring to flow back into your own heart. Allow them to warm you, to support you, and to nurture you. For you are indeed a being of light. You anchor that light to the earth, and you carry it to each and every being for whom you choose responsibility, no matter how minute a choice it may be. Your random acts of kindness begin with yourself, and then they may carry on out into the world. 
and believe us. They are neither forgotten, nor do they go unnoticed. For we notice them. And when you return to our side, you will be reminded of all of your acts of kindness and how they played a part in the learning of your lessons. <laughs> May all of the angelic realms send you light and love in this time of your life. May all of your guides and teachers and masters spend as much energy as possible assisting you in learning your lessons. And may your days upon the earth be joyous, friendly, and yes, even responsible. Much peace and great love to each of you. From we, the Archangel Mikael, so be it. Welcome back. I hope this season finds you happy and warm and joyful. And I hope all of your desires and your wishes come true. For now, this is Gregory saying over and out. <laughs>